Hi, my name is Tony Guerra and I am the Pre-Pharmacy Advisor here at Des Moines Area Community College. And I will know that we don't have four-year degrees here, but as you're doing your two years worth of work here, what major might you be going towards uh, as you're thinking about it uh, with another college? Uh, we have great connections with Drake University, Grandview, and Iowa State in which you can take classes there while you take classes here and if you're full-time here there's an opportunity to take some of those for free. Uh, so first let's start with this. Uh, true false. There's one answer, a best major for all students that are applying to pharmacy school. You know from taking exams that when you see the word always or something to that effect that it's usually wrong and in this case it is wrong. There's not a best major but there are reasons to do certain majors and I want to go through those in this video. There's very little data on the pharmacy college admissions test um, by major because a bachelor's degree is not required. Um, most schools we're seeing 70 to 90 percent uh, are of the applicants have some kind of bachelor's degree uh, but it's still not required you can get in with a couple years worth of uh, college if you do it right. There is, however, significant data on the medical college admissions test because a bachelor's degree is required to get into medical school. I'm going to take my data or my objective uh, data set from a PDF made by the American Institute of Physics and they took their data from the Association of American Medical Colleges data warehouse and I like it because it looks a lot like swimming scores or the Olympic scoring system in which you can see small variabilities make a big difference and when you're watching the Olympics and you see 10 10 10 versus 9.5 9.5 9.5 9 you say well okay well I can see that one was you know, much better than the other because there's not much difference numerically uh, between what we're looking at between the majors there's only about 2.3 difference so we need to see uh, those differences. Now the PCAT and MSCAT are, are scored certainly differently but I think you're gonna find uh, the data is going to certainly help you make a decision on what your major should be. So first let's differentiate the most common major versus the best major. Uh, the most common major you can still have a lot of applicants and you see on that physics data set uh, that there are 12,000 plus applicants uh, from the biology pool and only 2,000 applicants from the chemistry pool and 400 applicants from the English pool. So if we have something similar coming to pharmacy school we can have a very high rejection rate in biology and still have that as the most common major. We can have a very high, we can not have as high a rejection rate in chemistry, but certainly much higher than the only 500 students that applied to medical school. So it's reasonable to say that just because biology is the most common major, it may not be the best major. What you want is something irrespective of if it's got a lot of people in the major versus a low number of people in the major you want to have something that has a low rejection rate and that would yield the best major so the truth is from our true false that the best undergraduate major provides three things it's going to give you a high grade point average it's going to give you excellent preparation for the entrance exam in this case it would be the PCAT and it's going to give you excellent preparation for the application process. So let's look first at high grade point average. I looked on the internet and I found uh, this study uh, done by Wake Forest and Lynn O'Shaughnessy, I don't think I pronounced that right, at cbsnews.com uh, did an article and you can look it up, five hardest and easiest major by GPAs and you see that English uh, somewhere around 3.3 uh, biology right around 3.0 and chemistry closer to 2.75. Some colleges won't even look at your application without a 3.0 and that's kind of disappointing because really 
pharmacists have always been chemists. And because these chemistry professors are not in line with their peers uh, in the humanities, they're really uh, holding their own students back. Um, in biology, it's the same case. Uh, we're getting a 3.0. Some of them aren't going to get the 3.0, won't even get seen by uh, the pharmacy admissions committee. And then the English, is English that much easier uh, that you know, we have a 3.3 .3 grade point average, a 0.5 difference between English and chemistry? Uh, I'm an English major, and I can tell you it's not easy, but I can tell you that there's a big difference in what we're allowed to do and what biology and chemistry majors are allowed to do. In English, a lot of what we do is revision. So we have our first you know, revision, and if I was to hand that in, sure, I'd be at a 2.75 GPA. But then we talk with a professor, we talk with the writing center, we maybe workshop it in group, and then we create a better revision, and then a better revision. So that when we get to the end and grade time, and that piece of paper, you know, maybe five, ten page document, comes to the professor, well, we have a pretty good uh, paper, very polished, very good. Chemistry and biology are very much uh, dictated by exams. How did you do on this exam? How did you do on that exam? With very little chance for revision. You can't say, okay, well, I didn't do very well on this exam. I've learned all of this now. Uh, can I take the exam again? And the answer is probably no. Okay. So I don't think that it's necessarily that English is easier. I tell you, a chemistry major uh, would be very uncomfortable in an English class, and some English majors might be uncomfortable in a chemistry class. But it, I think, has more to do with how the major works. Uh, I think music, which is not on this sheet, um, is one of the highest acceptance rates uh, to medical school, and I don't know if that would be true for pharmacy. But I think it's the same way. You're composing something, and because you're composing something, you get to make revisions, you get to practice, uh, and you get to get better and better and better. So I don't necessarily think that uh, chemistry and biology departments should completely change the way that they do things. But I think that it would be better if they worked in a revision way in which students could show that they're mastering principles uh, rather than doing things compartmentally. Uh, so that's high grade point average. Uh, the next thing would be the preparation for the entrance exam. And again, I use these uh, statistics that the um, Physics Institute uh, pulled from uh, the American Medical Colleges. And I want you to notice how just way off this seems to be intuitively. So first of all, if we look uh, at the first page, we see that English beats chemistry beats biology. And I added those scores up. English has a 29.6, chemistry has a 28.7, and biology has a 26.9. You would think that chemistry, much tough, is the one with the lowest GPA, so that means that they're working the hardest, and that means they should get the best scores on uh, the MCAT. And then biology instructors, or biology students, are the second lowest GPA, so we would expect that they're working very hard, and they should get uh, the next highest. And then English majors, who have it easy, quote-unquote, uh, should be able to, uh, should have the lowest uh, scores. Uh, but it's exactly the opposite of that. If we look at the scores individually, we've got the three different uh, parts of uh, the MCAT, which corresponds in some way to the PCAT. Uh, the physical sciences, uh, chemistry beats both English uh, and biology. And that makes sense. Um, that section is chemistry and physics, and uh, that's their focus. But why is English beating biology? That shouldn't happen. Chemistry and physics are much more related to biology, aren't they? Well, if we look at the way the questions are worded, especially in the MCAT, it's very much paragraph, understand what's going on in the paragraph, pull out the relevant material, and so forth. And that's what English majors do. We just... Uh, 
every day we're working on uh, making sure we understand something uh, from many different perspectives uh, and I think that's why in the physical sciences English beats biology. The next column is a stunner. This makes no sense at all. How in the world can an English major tie with a chemistry major and beat a biology major in biology? That makes no sense at all. Right? If you're spending your entire four-year career and you're leaving and someone says, okay, what did you major in biology? You should be an expert in biology. Why are you getting beat by an English major? And why are you getting beat by a chemistry major? And I don't really know if I have a necessary explanation for this. I think it comes back again to the way the questions are worded. Uh, the questions are in paragraph form. Uh, you have to understand the main point. And I think maybe the biological sciences, maybe the chemistry uh, does something a little bit uh, different. It's very problem focused. Um, but again, an English major shouldn't beat a biology major in biology. It's like a sprinter. Uh, beating a swimmer in the Olympics. It just shouldn't happen that way. And verbal reasoning, uh, this is where uh, you really see the English majors uh, shining. 10.3, uh, uh, very high uh, relative to chemistry uh, and then uh, biology. Uh, so, um, again, uh, very unusual statistics, uh, very surprising statistics. Uh, but I think uh, you can see that, wow, uh, maybe there's something to being an English major. So preparation for the entrance exam, English wins, chemistry comes second, and biology major comes third. What about the application process? Application process includes doing a number of essays. And we expect that the English major with significant preparation in writing, in reading would do a very good job at this. Uh, chemistry and biology I feel maybe they would be tied. Uh, there's no special uh, one or the other has an advantage I think in terms of writing and things like that. Uh, but I also think that in the interview process uh, the English major might do a little bit better because they're asked very hard questions and they're expected to articulate their answers in a short period of time although we generally do it in writing rather than in reading, um, I feel that the English major has the upper hand there as well. So the winner is English? That seems really just wrong. Uh, but uh, when you look at the data and you look at the numbers, uh, it seems that uh, English looks like uh, the best major. I think there are three takeaway points uh, that we can make from all of this and that's first that a non-science major, it doesn't have to be English if you don't like to read I wouldn't choose English maybe choose history or something else. Biology is the most common major uh, but it might not be the best major and I think the reason that those scores are low, GPAs are low is because students think that they have to be a biology major when they would rather be a music major or an English major or a history major or something else and when you're in or doing something that you don't like, I don't think you're going to do as well with it. So I think the best major is really uh, the one that you're going to enjoy because I feel like you're going to do best in something that uh, you really are passionate about. You're going to put more time into it. And ultimately, uh, the best major is the one that you're going to uh, put the most energy into.